everyone, it's uh, Ollie Apsom here again, uh, tackling the last day of 2016, so Happy New Year, if uh, that's your thing. Um, personally, I don't get too stressed about it. Anyway, um, I've been uh, asked by a number of people to talk a little bit more about the boat navigation system that I built last year, and as it's the middle of winter now, I've got the majority of it, or at least the working parts, um, back here in my house, and over the winter, I'm going to be collating some of the information that I used to build it, and putting that together, um, hopefully in the form of some sort of instructional video um, that you can use to tinker around and play with your own stuff. Um, haven't had it operational for a year. There's going to be a couple of changes I'm planning to make this winter. However, nothing major. And one thing I would say is that even in the year that's gone past, technology has moved along quite a lot. So what was a relatively high price um, solution when I did it last year, you can now have a lot cheaper. So I doubt whether it's still sort of economically sensible to use the exact components that I've used. Um, however, I've still got them and I'm very happy with them and I'll continue to use them until they fail. Okay, so we will now proceed to take a look at what we've got. Okay, so obviously the setup you've got in front of you is not the same setup on the boat in terms of I've got my home major display laptop here and uh, I'm in what I uh, refer to as my lab but is actually basically um, the smallest room in the house that I use to keep my uh, clothes and other junk in. So uh, sorry you had to sit through that but... Uh, I've cleaned it out specially for you, I promise. There was half an inch of dust in here when I started, so uh, treat yourselves lucky. So the setup we've got at the moment, just for demonstration purposes, is the Raspberry Pi here, um, the Yocto 3D sensor, and this wireless mouse keyboard, and obviously my HDMI display. Now, as I mentioned in the previous uh, video, what I'd used was this Yocto 3D sensor, there'll be a link in the description, um, which is effectively a USB um, accelerometer and gyro compass. Um, and it's been mounted in a very safe, secure place at the bottom of my boat for the last year in this box, um, which was then double-sided taped to um, the underside of a storage locker, a very long way away from any metal or magnets and a very long way from any water, or at least <laughs> any water that was inside the boat. Hopefully it was probably only about 30 centimetres away from actual water, but uh, luckily for me that stayed outside. Um, this I'm quite happy with and would recommend to you. It's a DIN rack mountable um, Raspberry Pi box, um, which allows the Raspberry Pi to be mounted inside a cabinet on a DIN um, DIN rail, which any electrician or cabinet builder will tell you is the way to go it, and that's what I did. Um, this is just a power line um, to a standard USB power source. Obviously on the boat it comes off a 12 volt to 5 volt USB converter, um, and that is what we use. And as I say, I've been very happy with the situation so far. Now, there is a lot of software that I wrote for this, and I'm going to be honest with you, never having coded before, it's probably a bit idiosyncratic. I'm going to post a link to a Dropbox um, where you can copy it yourself, but I suspect that other than sort of showing you roughly how to go about it, you'll probably, if you know how to code, you'll be pretty pissed off with it. And if you don't know how to code, it might not be the best to start with mine. Also, of course, the code's pretty hardware specific. Um, I don't actually have the GPS sensor uh, with me today. Um, I forgot it and left it on the boat. So the next uh, chunk of video, I'll show you how that works. But what we're going to do now is look at the first piece of working software that I wrote for this in Python, and we're going to open it up here. And what this is called is Yocto Grab, and what it does is it's basically a very simple, um, basic way of connecting to this 3D sensor and printing out the... Um, figures that come off it. And frankly, um, with the system that I built, there's two main components. There's the um, 3D sensor and there's the GPS unit, which as I mentioned, I don't have it on me. Once you've figured out how to get the data from those two sensors into your Pi and display it in front of you in 
a text-based rolling scrolling format basically everything else is just fluff you know it's writing graphical interfaces um, however you want that to be it's you know looking up the mast to work out how to calculate the range between various gps locations and stuff um so actually personally for me the hardest part was getting to this stage where i wrote yocto grab 2 which was the first version that actually worked and a similar one for the gps um, unit now i haven't actually run this program for uh, about a year because obviously i then developed it into the graphical version but let's see what happens if i press f5 he said crossing his fingers so f5 is pressed and it doesn't look like anything's happening so let's just go to run and run module let's try that Okay, right. Ah, there you go. It is working. So what you can see here is roll, pitch, compass, bearing, acceleration, and gyro. Um, so <clears throat> if I go back to the sensor, we can see it's flat on the ground. So the roll is more or less zero. If I rotate it to the left, you can see it going there. So it put it to about 45 degrees. And you can see here on my hand that it is indeed at 45 degrees. Put it back to zero, clonk, zero, and we'll see it more or less back at zero. Same thing with the pitch, so we're more or less at zero, up it, 14 degrees, let's go up to about 25, let's try and get it to 45, roughly there, and you can see I'm holding it at 45 degrees. So that's great. Um, finally, the gyro, uh, not gyro compass, the magnetic compass, you can see 358. So I'm pointing basically north at the moment, which is where this side of the house roughly paints, part of the points. So if I then turn it about 90 degrees to the right, we should eventually get to, yeah, 090. And there we are. And now you can see I'm 90 degrees away from where I was. Um, <clears throat> there's all sorts of other data you can extract from this device. As I say, it's a proper three-axis um, accelerometer. So you've got a gyro roll rates, um, you can actually extract the acceleration in all three directions as well. I've summed it from memory, I think I've summed it on this and just took the, the vector uniform on it. Um, but basically, once you've got to this stage here, where those numbers are rolling in front of you, it's it, you're home and dry, as far as this sentence is concerned. Um, you are, you're absolutely home and dry. Um, everything else is just putting these... Um, information into various uh, matrices or vectors or whatever the hell you want to call them in Python and then reading that into your user interface and to be perfectly honest if you don't want to do that if you can't be bothered doing that you're still getting useful information here you know there's nothing it's just not presented in a particularly clear way um, but it is presented and then as I say this program is very very crude so as far as I remember to stop it I think it's control break it's either control break or control C or something like that. There we go, control C. And uh, that's it, stopped. And basically, that is pretty much all there is to that.